Hi guys, welcome back to Programming in Rust. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be building a web crawler that specifically looks for broken links. So the idea is that it will parse the HTML on a web page, look for hrefs, and then try to follow those hrefs to the websites that they connect to, and it will tell us whether or not that link is broken. For this project, the dependencies that we're going to need are Hyper. This is an HTTP library. It allows us to connect to the internet. Then we're using HTML5 Ever, which is a part of the servo browser. It's basically the HTML parser. And then we're using URL, which is a helper library to help us parse our URLs properly. In our main.rs, we want to bring in HTML5 ever and URL. And then we want to create a sub module called parse, as well as a parse.rs file. This module is what's going to allow us to parse the HTML as we bring it in from each of the web pages that we crawl over. So we want to bring in the string struct from standard library. Then from HTML5 ever, we want to bring in tendril sync. We want to bring in parse document. We want to bring in handle, node data, and RC DOM, and we want to bring in attribute. Our tendril sync is sort of like an object to help us parse specific types of strings. This is kind of how the Servio browser refers to strings and strings of data. Parse document is a function that's pretty self-explanatory. It allows us to parse the entire document. An RC DOM is a reference to a DOM node. So kind of like how we created our DOM nodes inside of our browser engine, this is a reference to that type of DOM node structure. Then we have our handle, which is a pointer to the actual node itself. And then we have node data, which is all of the data inside of the node. Then our attribute import is for dealing with tag attributes inside of the HTML. Our first function will be called parse HTML. This will take in our source, which will be a reference to a string, and it will output an RC DOM node. And inside of this, we're going to call parse document. And we're going to call this first on the RC DOM with the default values inside of it. And our options here are going to be default default as well. Then we want to specify that we want to parse it from UTF-8. So we're going to add this read from function so that we can read the HTML into our slice of string as bytes, and then we want to unwrap it so that we do get the RC DOM. The next function that we're going to create is called get URLs. This will take in our handle, so our pointer to our RC DOM, and it will output a vector of strings. First, we'll create two mutable vectors, one called URLs and the other one called anchor tags. Then we want to call a method that will create below us called get elements by name. And inside of this, we're going to pass in our handle, the tag that we want to get, which will be A, and then our mutable anchor tags vector. And the idea behind this is that it will populate our anchor tags with various DOM nodes. Then we can iterate through our anchor tags with a for loop. And then we can destruct our node by matching it with node data element. So if it is a node data element, then we can get the adders out. And then we can iterate through our attributes. And then we want to destruct our adder, so the iteration through our attributes, into the reference for name and the reference for value. And from our name, we want to check to see if the local local value of that is href, and if it is, then we want to push it into our URLs vector as a string. And then finally, at the end of this function, we want to return our URLs. So now we have our get our elements by name function. This will take in our handle like we had up here. It will also take in the element name, which will be a slice of string, and it will take in our out, which will be a mutable vector of node data. This function is going to be a fairly crude tree walker rather than a full-blown CSS selector library. First, we'll bind handle to a variable called node. Then we want to use an if let match to see if node data is of type node data element. And if it is, we want to pull out name, attributes, and and template contents. Next, we want to check to see if our name.local dereft and referenced is equal to our element name. And if our name.local is equivalent to our element name, then we want to push into our out, which is our vector of node data, an entire node data element with the name field being our name.clone, our attributes being our attributes.clone, our template contents being our template contents.clone. And then we want to set our math ML annotation XML integration point to false. Then at the bottom of our function, we want to recursively curl ourselves after iterating through the node.children. So this will go through all the children nodes of the node that we were looking at, and then it will call get elements by name on top of it. All right, so now that we have our parse library, we need to make a fetch library. We want this to be a sub module of main, so we put it into our main.rs as mod fetch, and then we create a fetch.rs file. Now our fetch.rs file is where we're going to actually fetch the HTML document. So inside of it, we want to 
bring in our external crate for hyper and URL. Then we wanna bring in standard IO read. Then we wanna bring in standard thread so that we can make this multi-threaded. We need time duration so that we can manipulate time. And we need the channel structure so that we can push items through our channels. And we also want to have standard FNT so that we can use debugging. Also, we wanna bring in hyper client because we're going to be connecting to things. Then we want to bring in hyper status status code so that we can get back various HTML codes. And we wanna bring in URL parse result, URL and URL parser. And this will allow us to parse the request results for calling some of the URLs that we're looking at. We also additionally want to just use our parsing library. The first structure we wanna create is an enum called URL state. And this will have an accessible field which will have our URL in it. Otherwise it'll be bad status with URL and then the status code then connection failed with the URL in it, then timed out with the URL in it, then malformed with a string in it. So basically, if it's accessible, that means that we've succeeded and that the link is fine. If we get back a bad status, then that means the link didn't work and we wanna see the status code. If we have a connection failed, then we don't really need to see the status code because it just didn't work. If it timed out, then we know it failed as well and we don't need to see any status code. And if it's malformed, then it will just send us back a string because it won't look like a URL. We also want to derive debugging clone. We want to implement FMT display for URL state. For our FMT function, we just want to match on self. For accessible, we're going to take out the URL and then we're just going to format the two exclamation points, put URL inside of it, and then pass it back with FMT. We'll do the same thing for bad status, except we'll have an X and this will show us the URL and the status code. And then for connection failed, we'll just do it with our URL. Then for timed out, it will say timed out with an X. And the same for malformed, it'll have an X, it'll say malformed. Now we want to build our URL. So we'll take our domain, which will be a slice of string, and then the path that we want to look at. And then we'll output a parse result of URL type. So we'll say let URL string equal format. And we're going to make it into a format of a URL, which has HTTP colon backslash backslash, and then the domain. And then we'll say let base URL equal URL parse. And we'll pass in our base URL string, and then we want to unwrap it. Then we'll create a mutable URL parser. And then we'll instantiate that URL parser by calling raw URL parser dot base URL on our base URL. On URL parser, we want to just parse the path. Up top here, we want to make a constant called timeout. And this will be the time that we will use to determine whether or not a link has timed out. I'm going to set it at 10 so the link can have 10 seconds before it times out. So next we want to create a function called URL status. This will take in our domain and path and then it will output a URL state. And inside of it, we'll match on the function that we created here called build URL. And we'll put in our domain and path. And if we get back a URL, then we want to open a channel. We want to create TX and RX, so our transmitter and our receiver. And then we want to clone our transmitter. Then we'll clone the URL with U. And then we'll spawn a thread with a closure inside of it. And inside of this closure, we want to instantiate a new client. Then we want to take our URL and serialize it and put it inside of URL string. So our serializer takes the URL and converts it from a URL type to a string type. And then we want to get our response by using our client to actually get the URL. So we pass in the URL string and then we click send. This basically is like clicking the link and the response is whatever we get back from clicking that link. And then we want to take our request transaction and click send on it. And then we want to match on our response. If we get back an okay, we want to get the R from inside of it. This will be our response. And we want to check to see what the status code is. So we check for R.status. And if that equals okay, then we want to return URL state accessible with the URL inside of it. Otherwise, if r.status doesn't match on status code OK, then we want to return bad status with the URL and then the r.status in it. If we get back an error, then we just want to return URL state connection failed with the URL in it. Then we want to spawn another thread, and this will be for us to send a timeout down the channel after a delay. So in this thread, we will say thread sleep for duration of our timeout, and then we'll check and see if the URL state is timed out on our URL. And then we'll return our URL state timed out with our U inside of it, which is our cloned URL. After our two threads, we want to call Rx, so our receiver. We want to call receive V on it, and we want to unwrap this. So we don't want it to be blocking. That's why we 
we're just calling receive v so this will automatically just give us back our status codes without blocking the execution if our match on build url doesn't come back as okay so if it comes back as an error then we'll return url state malformed with our path converted to a string using this to on method we want to create a function called fetch url this will take in a url of type reference to url and output a string first we want to instantiate our client then we want to convert our url into a string by serializing it then we want to create our outgoing request by saying client.get with our url string in it send okay and if it doesn't work then we will return a string that says could not fetch url then we'll create a new mutable empty string and and we will read our response and match on it. Res read to string and we'll put our body in here. If we get an okay, then that means we can read it and we can read it as a UTF-8 string. We'll just return the body. If we can't read it, that means it's binary data. So we just return an empty string. Now finally, we wanna create a function called fetch all URLs. This will allow us to fetch the requested URL, then return a list of the URLs on the page. So we're going to be returning a vector of strings because we're also interested in potentially formed URLs. So this takes in our URL, which is a reference to URL, and outputs a vector of string type. Inside of this function, we'll create an HTML source value, and then we will bind it to fetch URL, which is the function we created up here. Then we want to parse our HTML with our parser. So we call parse HTML on our HTML source, and we bind that to DOM. Then we call parse get URLs on DOM.document, and this will return a vector of strings. All right, so now we need to build our crawler. To do that, I'll I'll just create a submodule called crawler and I'll create a file called crawler.rs. We'll import our standard collections hash set and standard sync arc and mutex because we want to have shared state. And then we want to have our channel with receiver and sender traits. We also want to be able to spawn threads and then we need URL URL. And then from fetching, we want to bring in fetch all URLs, URL status, and then our URL state. Our crawler will be a struct that has three fields. We'll have two visit. This will be a arc mutex vector of strings and this will be all of the urls that we have yet to visit then our next field will be active count this will be an arc mutex of i32 this will be the count that we have visited and then we'll have the url states which will be our receiver of URL state type. And this will be the states of the URLs that we've gone over already. So we wanna implement an iterator for our crawler and each item that we actually crawl over will be of type of URL state. So our next function will take in our mutable self and we'll output an option of URL state. We'll create a loop and then we wanna match on self.urlstates.tryreceive. So we wanna to try to receive something from the channel. And if there currently is something in the channel, then we return it inside of an option. So we take it out of OK and then we put it into sum. And then we want to grab the locks from both to visit and to active count. And we're going to attach these to to visit value and then active count value. So if we get back an error, then we want to grab the locks of our two mutexes. So to visit and active count. And we'll put them into to visit value and active count value. If to visit val is an empty vector of strings and active count val is equal to zero, then we just want to return none because we're finished. Otherwise, we want to continue continue. Essentially, we want to continue because the channel is currently empty, but we'll get more values later on. Next, we want to create a constant called threads. This will be an i32, and I set it to be 20. You can set it to be whatever you'd like. This will be the amount of threads that we will assign to our crawler. We want to create a function called crawl worker thread. This will take in our domain, which will be a reference to a slice of string. Then it will take in our to visit, which will be an arc of mutex of vector of strings. And then visited, which will be an arc of mutex of hash set of string. And then we'll have our active count, which will be an arc mutex of i32. And then our URL states, which will be a sender of URL state. So we want to create a loop and then we'll create a variable called current outside of the scope of what we want to do. Then we'll create a new scope and then we'll grab the lock of our to visit value. We also want to grab the lock of our active count and then we want to check if to visit value is empty. Basically, we're checking to see if there are other requests that are still currently being resolved and therefore we might get more work in the future. So we need to verify if active count value is greater than zero. Then we just want to continue our loop. Otherwise, if it's less than zero and if to visit val is empty, then that means that we're finished. So there won't be any more URLs to finish, so we just terminate the thread. Then outside of our if statements, we want to set 
current equal to to visit val.pop. This will take the string out of the vector. And then we want to increment our active count value by one. And then we want to make sure that our active count value is less than or equal to our threads. Then we want to create a new scope and we want to lock our visited value. And then we want to check to see if that contains current. That's why we have current outside of the scope. So current is our string that we're trying to go to. So we want to see if this is contained inside of our visited value. Then we want to create a mutable value called active count value and set that equal to the lock of active count. And then we want to decrement our active count value and continue. Otherwise, we want to insert into our visited value our current as a string. So this allows us to check to see if we've already visited this URL. Then outside of that scope, we want to set state equal to URL status with our domain and current inside of it. And this will fetch our URL for us. Then we want to say, all right, well, if state.clone is equivalent to URL state accessible, so if the URL is accessible, then we want to pull that URL out and we want to check that domain against our sum domain. And if sum domain and domain are equal, then we want to create newer URLs, which will fetch all of the URLs. So we pass our URL into that. So it'll fetch all the URLs on the page. Let mute to visited value equal to visit. So we grab the lock. We want to iterate through our new URLs, which is our huge vector of URLs that we've pushed back. And then we want to push all these new URLs into our to visit value. We want to grab the active count lock again. We want to decrement it by one. And then we want to check to see that it's greater than zero. Then we want to take our URL states and send the state. So now we want to make a crawl function. This will take in our domain and our starting URL, which will be a URL type, our domain being a slice of string, and it will output a crawler. All right, so we'll create a value called to visit. This will be an arc new mutex new with a vector inside of it. And then we'll take our start URL and we'll serialize it into a string. So we're putting it in side of our vector. And then our active count will be a active count of zero to start. And then visited will be a new hash set inside of a mutex and an arc. Then we want to create our transmitter and receiver from our channel. And then we want to instantiate our crawler with our to visit our active count and our rx as our URL states. Now we want to iterate from zero to the number of threads that we have. So our constant threads, in my case, it's 20. And we're going to set domain equal to domain dot to owned, then to visit to equal to to visit dot close then visited equal to visited.cloned, then active count equal to active count.cloned, and tx equal to tx.cloned. And we want to move all of these variables into a thread which we spawn, and this thread we'll call crawl worker thread. So we put in our domain, our to visit, our visited, our active count and our TX. Finally, we want to pass back our crawler. So this will call the function above it and it will crawl through all of the URLs for us. All right, so now we want to go back into our main library. We want to bring in standard environment, standard IO, standard out, standard IO right, and URL, URL. Then from our fetch library, we want to bring in URL state. So our standard environment will allow us to get our environment variables and standard out will allow us to read out. Then write will allow us to write to the console and then URL will help us parse our URL. URL. So first we want to get our arguments. So this will be a vector with an empty type inside of it. Typically it's a vector slice of strings and we will call environment args.collect and then we'll check to see if our arg length is greater than one. And then we'll let our starting URL string equal args one, so the first index of our args vector. Then we want to take our start URL string and call URL parse on it to turn it into a URL type. And then we'll say let domain equal start URL dot domain. And then if we cannot execute this, we'll pass back a string that says cannot find the domain in your URL. Then we'll create a success count, set it equal to zero, and a fail count and set it equal to zero. Both of these are mutable by the way. And then we'll iterate through our crawler crawl with domain and start URL in it. And we'll iterate with the URL states that we get back. And then we want to match on that URL state. If we get back accessible, then our success count goes up by one. If we get back a status, meaning anything else, then our fail count will go up by one and we'll print that out. And then we'll have a print line that will print out our succeeded, which will be our success count and our failed, which will be our failed count. And we'll use standard out flush and unwrap to make it look like it's just sitting there and just changing the values so it won't actually uh, make new lines. Then if our args has a length that is less than one or equal to one, then we just want to print out, please provide a URL. All right, so that's it for our URL crawler. Let's actually try it. So I'm going to run this on my own website, which is tensorprogramming.com. So now our program has finally compiled and it is now running. It is now crawling tensorprogramming.com. And we've got two succeeded, zero failed, 
And now we've got a bunch failing. So we've got 124 that are failing. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked it, then by all means, download it as much as you'd like. Have a good day.